Jungle motherfucking beats. 2016 has been a big year of music. Huge. I don't think they could do top fit 2015, but I think now the, the more you look, the more you see. Before yeah. we get to our top albums of the year, Hi. we're going to do honorable mentions. These are the albums that didn't make the top 10 cut. Yeah, we've this done is, our research. This is not just hip hop. This is uh, everything else. Yeah, everything that we too. fuck with. People that we want people to listen to because we think it's good shit. Mm-hmm. It's Go ahead, shit. Alexander, man. List your uh, right. honorable mentions that didn't make the cut of the top 10 albums of the year, but people should still be checking it out and fucking right. with it in some way. I will mention to Logic for his Bobby Tarantino tape. Oh, shit. Because that shit was flames. Not bad. Flexecution, Super not, Mario World. That bad. shit had a lot of bangers on there. And okay. it was Logic just being like, look, in between like my albums, they're going to be conceptual. They're going to be a lot of like hugeness to it. But in between, it's like, you know what? Fuck with the fans. I love rapping fast. I love having fun on beats. Mm-hmm. And this is him just doing exactly that. I feel that. And it was a really fun tape. I thought there wasn't much bad about this. It was just him just spitting. I didn't, have, I didn't have that on my list, um, but I definitely respect the choice. Um, should I go from the top? I'm going to go from the top. You know the top by heart? No, I got it right in front of me. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> it's a long list. <laughs> uh, J. Cole, For Your Eyes Only. Yeah, I got that on mine as well. It didn't make the top 10. I'm the same. And um, that's probably because I didn't, I didn't have enough time to let it uh, mature and maturate, but at the same time, I don't think it's cohesive uh, lyrically-wise. Uh, enough to make the top 10 there's some filler there's some tracks that just confuse me as to the the, the, the direction he's trying to go with the album look at the the first reaction if you want to hear more mm-hmm. otherwise I'm, I'm yeah. with you as well I feel like I still fuck with the album I've been playing it a lot but uh, it just doesn't like it resonates with me but not completely there's certain tracks of like uh, yeah. if I was this sort of person it would resonate with me more yeah. but right now that's not who I am right so that's why it's not in my top what you got next next I got, uh, actually, I got Jaron Benton's, his album. Who is that? He is from, he was a part of uh, Hobson's, what was Hobson's label called? Funk Volume. Okay. It's part of Funk Volume. And because since they split up, he went to Strange Music. And uh, this is off his, his uh, album, Slow Motion 2. And it was actually, so this is something that I wasn't expected like. It was more just me being like, oh, cool. I like this sort of stuff. He's done a lot of stuff with Team Backpack, who's known for a lot more lyrical, you know, really good shit. And it was just a really great album. His, his flow was probably the best thing about him. He has a fucking insane flow. And, and I never thought of him as being lyrical, but like he can spit, man. He can spit really good. And the beats were pretty good as well. That's the weakest things were the beats in some points of the album. Okay. But yeah, I fucked with that album heavy and I thought it deserved a mention. Check him out. Yo, yo. Um, Vic Mensa. Woo! There's a lot going on. I got that in mind as well. It could have creeped into the top 10. You know what? It was in my top 13. Because mm, the last three to cut out. And, yeah. I, and I, the reason I cut it out was purely because it was an EP. Because I thought, oh, you know right, what? That's true. Seven tracks. Like there are there are albums that are about fifteen tracks that yeah. I probably like Vic a bit more. But it's more the fact that they've put that extra work in there. It's quality. It's, it's quality. Start to finish, it showcases exactly what he can do with so many different genres in hip hop. What you got? We got Ishtar with Broken, Broken Hearts, Hearts and bank- Ballad Bankrolls. Yeah, Bankrolls. Because that for him is I second. Got that too. Yeah, yeah. For his second, um, I could say album because you know mixtapes, but it was solid. Uh, really showcasing that him with his own style coming into the game. And if you fuck with it, then I'm really excited for what he's got next up. A new artist, highly recommend to check him out. Um, mm-hmm. He's got a great sound, yeah. and he knows how to flow. Exactly. Uh, uh, you're not going to probably like this one, but um, Denzel Curry, Imperial. Okay. Um, now, I, I, <laughs> for those who don't know, this Alexander Man loves that album. I fucking love Imperial right. so fucking much. I think it's, I think it's a good album. Mm-hmm. Um, it just didn't resonate with me enough to hit the top 10. I didn't dive into it enough. That's my own fault. It's not your own fault. This is your opinion. Well, yeah, it's my fault. I didn't dive into it enough, though. Mm. Um, but it's definitely probably in a lot of people's uh, top album considerations. Yeah, definitely yeah. quality album by a quality artist who's doing great things. Looking forward to 2017. Mm-hmm. I got... Uh, I don't think you would have heard this one either. We got La Orange and Mr. Liff with The Life of the life and Death of Scenery. It's a really artistic album. Very. Uh, it's not hip-hop? No, it's hip-hop. It's very boom-bap. Mr. Lift's the producer, and La Orange is the rapper. La Orange has released a lot of stuff in the last few years that I really fuck with. It's sort of me liking that uh, that really old-school hip-hop sound that's sort of carried through, but sort of they've added their own little tweak to it to make it their style, and it's a style that I really fuck with. Okay. And I think that's, yeah, it was a really good album. The Coloring Book, Chance the Rapper, did not make my top 10. Um, Didn't even make my own drumble mentions. <laughs> Damn. I'm sorry, man. I'm, I'm cold, Chance. Chance. Break. Yo, I fucking love Chance. I just didn't like that album. All right. Well, it, it got into my honorable mentions. Yeah. I, I don't need to speak much on that. People know why it's a good album. Gospel exactly. vibes. Energy's there. Um, yeah, let's go. We'll see it. Yeah, if I was doing it based off what I thought the people would like, it'd probably be in there. Uh, we've got Saba, Bucket List Project. 
Mm. I listened to that a lot more. I like Vocalist Project it's quite a bit. Yep. There was a few tracks that I thought were very similar to other tracks. Like, this, like they were just like too similar, but start to finish still, solid project. Kept a continuous energy exactly. and sound. Cohesive. Uh, mm-hmm. Views by Drake. That's in my honorable mentions as well. There you go. Didn't make the 10. No, it didn't. Um, but I can see the mainstream appeal. Yep. There's a lot of mainstream Definitely. appeal to it. Um, that's just not how I... I don't know. I just can't put it in there for it that. It was an album that when it came out, I played it a lot. But then over time, I just kept going back to tracks. I didn't go back to the album. Mm. That's, that's a, what that what made me realize that it's more an album for tracks for me. Great point. Great point. Mm. I've got a Frank Ocean Blonde. No, you didn't. I did. No, you didn't. It's honorable mention. Stop it. I told you. Stop it. This is one of the Stop three. Stop it. You know why it's in Stop here? Stop it. You know why it's in here? Tell me why. Because I just found that I didn't go back to it as much as many other projects. And here's the thing. I fucking love this album. Lyrically amazing. It's beautiful. Such a great comeback after the highest that he had. But when I was putting this is in this is me trying to figure out what to put my ten as well. When I got to like the top 13, 14, I, I was What thinking, more do you want from him? Listen. <laughs> listen, when I was putting this together, I thought to myself, what resonates with me more? What have I been going back to more? I see. And it just missed out. Yeah, I see. And when you hear my top ten, you'll be like, nah, fuck off. Blonde shit's all over this. And that's that'll be your opinion. <laughs> but this is me at the time. Like if you were talking to me a few months ago, blonde would be up there. Mm. But a lot of shit has been dropped, and a lot of shit that's been dropped, I'm listening to a lot more than this. I get it. There's been a lot of music we've had to <sighs> sift through. Oh, it's been tough. a lot of music, man. All right. Yeah, you didn't like Layers, that. Royce to five yep. nine. That's in mine as well. Fuck with the album, man. Yo. Fuck probably one of the best storytelling albums of the year. Hundred percent. Yep. Up there with um J. Cole story tells well, yeah. so yeah. And it's also one of those albums that if I delved into it more, it'd probably be higher up. But yeah. I just didn't go back to it enough. Yeah. And that's because there's so much shit. And uh go ahead. All right. Uh Mac Miller, the Divine Phenomenon. Ah. I uh it was one of those albums which I, I dug, but I had to be in the right mood for it because singing Mac goes well with rapping Mac. But when it's just purely sort of singing Mac most of the time. Uh, it was just sort of hit and miss in the right mood. mood. Like you don't have a girlfriend who you're like, who yeah, I, I fuck, I fuck to that album, but like, but like you got to be dedicated to some like, like, like superhero, superwoman pussy to to like that album. <laughs> like you got to be like praising. Nah, the, the... I felt that were very. I think Dang Dang to me is one of the strongest tracks yep. and singles of the year. With Puck, yep, yep. I also think tracks like uh, Stay and also We with Sleep and the track with there are some tracks on there that are really good. But overall, like, I just think that what he went for is good. He's tried it out. He's done that. But I just want him to be like, cool, go back to what you're good at. <laughs> Get it out of the system. That's, that's, yeah, I think it deserved a mention. Alicia Keys, obviously not hip-hop. She released an album mm-hmm. uh, about a, six to eight weeks ago called Here. Yeah. Um, I really love Alicia Keys. W- one of my favorite. I don't even know what genre. R&B. Sing- she's a, obviously a singer, but uh, she's just- a R&B pop soul. Yeah. She's a beautiful soul uh, within her music and without. And um, I really like the project. And really like the direction she 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 took with it. And you said she was spinning on there a bit too, didn't you? With the first track. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She had a nice energy. So dope. No, I didn't listen to it. I it's really okay. should have. All right, this one. I've got Mick Jenkins, the healing component. No, he didn't. We do. Dude, no, he didn't. He didn't is, just do that. This was... He didn't just do that. This was like number... No, you make the top 10. This was number 12 for me, by the way. I'm sorry, Mick. This was you number 12. cut the video off Yo, now. Mick. I fucking love this album so much, but like when it came down to getting all my favorites together, you just you, you just missed out, man. Like there's there's like one track, one or two tracks in this album that I just don't fuck with. The whole thing is amazing, but at the end of it, I looked at what resonated with me again, and it just there, there were other shit that went past it, man. It's all right, we get we get past it. Once we see your top ten, I'll yeah, hopefully yeah. get a better idea where you're coming from. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> <laughs> Holy shit. Lance Skywalker introverted into wish yeah, now. I got that as well. Well, uh, Anthony Fantano put it in his top 10 worst albums. And it's, it's an opinion, so respect it. But I, I think we've spoken this before about how people that don't like music that's all over the place and not, you know, has not to a beat all the time, people just aren't going to. They're going to instantly think it's trash. They just can't see it for the art for what it really is. And even me at first, we were, we were very confused in our first listen. If you go and check it out, we've got a first reaction to yep. it. But do- over time, a lot of listens. Yes. It feels. I was going to say it feels directionless. Yeah. Um, and it's but a that's, bit that's haphazard. The that's the beauty of but, it. You know, uh, Lance Skywalker replied and let us know, like, to check out yep. what the actual meaning of introverted intuition means, and mm-hmm. it gives you some light to how the project came about. I didn't dive that much into it, but I'm going to put it in there because um, I'm going to give Lance a chance. Yeah. So there, there's your chance, Lance. Honorable mention. Beautiful. Next up, No Warriors. Yes, Lord. NX. Absolutely. I, I, I probably would like this album more than Malibu if, I, if, it, if it was released the other way around. I've mm. had so much time to let Malibu sink in. That's a great point. 
And I've had this album sinking in. I like it just pretty much as bad as Malibu, but like I just said, I got the time too. signal. So I fuck, I fuck this album. Yeah. Um, really high quality uh, project. Great, yeah. great sound to it. Um, Dead End Hip Hop loved it as well, yep. which made me appreciate the album a little more. I see some things I didn't see before. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I had more time to listen to it. Cause, time, man. <laughs> damn. I've released it a couple of times, so I, ca- I can't. Big year for Anderson it, Park, man. Big year. Probably has a top 10... Uh, you know, potential. If it we definitely, listen to it, it definitely does have top we, 10 potential. We recognize that. I recognize it. Um, now, I'm going to do two in one here because uh, simply ups. because Travis Scott, Birds, uh, Birds, uh, Birds, uh, fuck, I'm not going to say all, whatever the fuck the title is. <laughs> now, I put a cross through it, okay? Meaning, okay. Uh, I get why people will put it an honorable mention, but I just went back to the album today and had a little look. Um, it's a track album. So you go back to some tracks. It's not a... Like with Drake. Like I go back yeah. to Goosebumps. I go back to the two Kid Cudi tracks. I go back to, I think, one of the closing tracks. Like right. there's some great tracks in there, but there were just so much filler to me. But the other tracks that I don't come back to, they're of a low level to me mm. that I, I'm sorry. It's honorable mention, but it's not an honorable mention. It's a bit of a weird one. No, no, no. It is for the tracks. I feel like if you're going to go back to it, that's enough to give it a mention. And then I was just going to say Schoolboy Q Blank Face. Um... Honorable mention. mention. Ooh. Okay, it's in his top ten. Ooh. But that's a, uh, that's a. Uh, I, I saw him live too, yeah, so yeah, I definitely yeah, yeah. got to experience it's it. It's all right. It's all right. Um, oxymoron was better. But uh, with the music videos and the, and the and the visuals behind it, mm. really high body oh. of work. It's high up there on the honorable mentions. Especially Groovy Tony. I fucking love that. One of the yeah, best man. tracks of the year, probably. Yep. Yep. Especially with the Jadakiss Eddie Kane on the end of that. Woo! Do we think? Killed that. Yo, I've got. Flatbush Zombies, 3001 Elise Odyssey. Mm, so do I. A lot of people didn't like this album. I quite liked it. I didn't love it as much as their previous their previous work, but this is them just taking a bit of a leap into a bit of unknown. They did they fuck with a lot more uh, instrumentation, uh, a lot more difference in terms of a bit more singing added effects and vocals, and the style was very different as well. So a lot of people didn't like this album, but I liked what they did with it, and I loved their especially their videos as well. Very very artistic, and they're very open on a lot of these tracks as well. So I thought it was definitely worth a mention. Uh, Rihanna, Anti. Yep. Um, that's an album I wish I could go back to because I see some potential through that. Yeah. I've actually seen a lot of people posting like, what would, what would you prefer? What do you go back to more? Rihanna, Anti or Beyonce Lemonade? And normally everybody says Rihanna, Anti because there's just so much more to go back to. She's exploring some, um, oh man, neo soul funk. Not funk. It's, oh, I'm going to pause the video. And I'm going to go get it. Cool. While you pause it, I'm going to eat a chip. Now, what I was trying to say is Rihanna touches on a genre of music called Afrobeat. Afrobeat uh, comes from like African roots, jazz roots, and soul roots. And she touches on it in a similar way to Drake does it. And a sound they're tapping into, it's kind of this, uh, you know what it is. It's on the work It's on the work song. It's on the one dance song, yeah. you know. And I think that's one reason they're tapping into that is why uh, it has such a claim. Well, Anthony Fatano mentioned that, like, I don't agree with him putting One Dance in his worst tracks, but also he said, one thing he did say that I agree with is when One Dance blew up and Work blew up, like, the sound was, people wanted to do that sound, so that sound became more yeah. and more inside yeah. of it. And yeah. that's true, the point that he mentioned there. I mean, I kind of like a lot of the sound, because I, I fuck with it a bit, but I can see why people wouldn't. We got Domo Genesis with Genesis. Oh, yeah. Which is his debut album. Forgot that. Uh, start of the year, this was top 10 material. Ooh. I do go back to this album probably once every two months. Mm-hmm. End of the year. This wasn't as good as some of the other stuff that was out there because there are some lackluster bits in there where it's a bit boring. I feel you. But uh, for a f- first project besides the mixtapes for him, very solid. And I feel like this is the first time he's found a style and stuck with it. Are you familiar with Domo Genesis? I'm familiar with Domo okay. Genesis. Well, I'm not. But I recognize it. Mm. Now, you're not going to like what I'm about to say. But it's because, I again, first album I've heard from the artist, Danny Brown, Trust the Exhibition. That's all right. Okay. Now, it's the first album I've, I've heard from you in title, but I definitely see... Mm. how great it is. I watched the interview yeah. with him and Anthony Fantano. I watched that interview. Um, Wait, with Anthony Fantano? Yeah, he did. A, they did a Skype interview. Oh, motherfucker, i got to watch this. Yeah, the other week. And I definitely recognize how musically intelligent um, Danny Brown is mm. and the experimentation he's doing on this on this record and why it can be so acclaimed. Mm. I get it. But it's not my flavor of tea at this current time. Fair, fair. Uh, for me, Alex Wiley, Tangerine Dream. Tangerine Dream, what a what a title! It's such a. This man releases like two mixtapes a year, and I think that most of it's very album worthy. Uh, I think that he is not releasing music too quickly. There's always something to it, and every time he releases something, he changes his style up a little bit. This was him slowing it down. I guess you could say Village Party too slowed it down, but this was sort of just trying to get it a bit slower, but also still have that sort of that big bump to it 
within the slowness. Like slow music with a bit more bass to it. Uh, yeah, I fucked with this, that big tape heavy. That's all I got to say, really. I'm Unti- looking forward next year. Untitled Unmastered, yep. Kendrick Lamar. Had that in mind as well. There you go. Obviously, it's good, but it's un- Untitled it's Unmastered. I think it's like, great. Yeah, I think it's pretty good. I, I go back to it, man. Yeah. I just don't think, because it, was, it wasn't released as an album, I'm yeah. not looking at it as an album. If Kendrick's not going to pay the respect of like putting some like big... Actually, I'm not going to say that, but honorable mention. <laughs> All right, you're going to like this one. Ali Belmont. Oh, shit. Forgot with about their, my man. Their, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the Intercontinental <sighs> Champion. Yep, that's the one. And also the EP they did as well, the 1.5 EP. Ali Belmont, for those who don't know, is a uh, really high quality unknown artist that many people mm-hmm. don't know about here in Melbourne, Australia. And we try and put these guys on every now and again when we have the chance. Please take it off. Yeah, I always go back to, especially the 1.5 EP, but Con- Intercontinental Champion as well. It's a fucking solid fucking tape, man. Check it out on Spotify. It's it fucking bangs. awesome. High quality. Mm-hmm. Short, sharp, punchy. What you got? K Trinata, 99.9%. Got it as well. Got it as well. There you go. Really, I love the vibe. It's, it's love super, the energy. There's so many different genres that he incorporates into this album, and I feel like he does it really well. But I feel like that's the reason why it didn't go higher up for me, because a lot of the sounds I don't fuck with, and a lot of the sounds I really fuck with. Like, say, the Vic Mensa track, Drive Me Crazy, or mm. the track with even um, uh, Craig David, so, so good. But then some of the tracks towards the end were a bit more electronically done, and some of the vocals I didn't fuck with, like that's sort of why even I fell his, out a bit Even for his me. instrumental tracks are great. Mm-hmm. Um, I also had, actually, I'm going to say uh, Black Party, who uh, many people don't know about. They dropped an album called Mango. Yeah, yeah. I remember listening to that. Um, some people may know about them. They're coming, unknown artists coming up. I really like the sound of it. Gave me some Frank Ocean vibes. I haven't mm-hmm. really dived into it, but I definitely respect it enough to put it on here. Yeah. I, I listened to it once. I don't think it had enough to make me go back to it, but maybe I should. Okay. It was pretty cool. I've got a uh, oh HL HL with Welcome to Gazi. This uh, was number eleven for me. It just missed out on top ten. Oh, this just I fucked with this album so so good. Uh, it's only ten tracks. It's his first album ever. There's like nothing else he's done besides these ten tracks, and there's not a bad track on there. He has his own sound within the R&B spectrum, and it's great. It's fucking a great album. I just I wish I could fit it in there. It's just there was just one album I fucked with more. Respect. Last one for me. Yeah. This might get some people uh, uh, agitated, but... It's Kanye West, isn't it? This man, <laughs> this man was doing some experimental things that I'm not familiar with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His name is Charles Gambino. He released an album called Awake in My Love. And um, I just can't get past California. That track is inexcusable to me. This even is though why ma- it didn't make my honorable mentions. <laughs> <laughs> that track alone doesn't make it get honorable mentions, man. Um, though many people actually enjoy it. I do enjoy it, but I feel like it's more of a mood album for me because I fuck with the, the Charles Gambino that spits. Right. What he's trying to do, I respect him for, but 100%. there's so much of it, I just can't enjoy it. That's why he's here. He's here yep. because yep. the direction you're going in is so far from what we're used to that I have to put you in there and give you your respect because mm-hmm. um, you're impressing me with your talent, skill, and if I was like 40 years old, um, I think I would fuck with this album really more heavily because mm-hmm. I'd understand the sounds of the eras. That's my last one. This is an album that I really want to be in there as well, but this is my album of the summer, and it's Duckworth's I'm Ugly. Ooh, nice. It was like, I really wanted to put it in there, but I just found that at the end of it, I still went back to a lot, but there were just probably one or two tracks on there that just didn't fit in the album with me, and that was the reason it didn't get in there. Yeah. But tracks like uh, Lowrider, I'm Dead, uh, what's the other one, like uh, Red Panther, like there's just so many fucking beautiful songs, and they just, yeah. just so much summery vibes, man. Yep. I'm going to keep rolling through. We've got A Tribe Called Quest with... We got it from here. Thank you for the memories. Mm-hmm. Oh no, we got it from here. And um, I feel like this album, if I had like, if I had more time, because I went back to a lot of albums, but because I'm not fucking with this sort of old school sound at the moment, like a Trouble Quest in like Q Tips in my top five rappers, Dead or Alive. But uh, I just haven't listened to this album enough. But I can appreciate it enough. Like it's a really good album for them to not release an album for that amount of time and come back and release this. Beautiful, but just not what I'm digging at the moment. So I reckon that if I listened to this more, I'd probably be like fuck. I should have put it in there, but I didn't. Uh, we've got Martin Sky. If anybody ever told you that they that they know, know me, me that lied. they lied. Yep. Once again, great should, project. I, I play, should put that in. Yeah. I play it because it fucking bangs. But once again, one or two tracks in there, a bit repetitive choruses and stuff. So didn't make it out. But still, a great fucking album. I can't wait to hear <coughs> the production albums has gone the way. Yeah. Which would be sick. Check out Martin Sky if you like banging beats. We got Jazz Cartier with Hotel Paranoia. I'm glad you put that in there. Don't forget about it, man. I'm not going to forget about Jazz. Toronto. <clears throat> and this is actually, to me, the catchiest album of the year. Mm. This is, to me, the catchiest album. Because 
pretty much 80% of this album, 75%, every hook yeah. is so fucking catchy. Yeah. Like, Red Alert, I Know, Opera. Opera. Oh, my God. Red Opera. The up. Like, this man, oh, this man yeah. knows how to make a fucking hook. Mm. This man knows how to fucking make... But that's the thing as well. Like, I found that a lot of tracks that I listen to, it's, like, sort of predictable in the way he does things as well now. Because I feel like you just know you're going to get that, like, that big moment hook that might be a bit over the top repetitive and then the verses will be like, you know. But fuck that. This man is talented as fuck and he deserved that mention. Mm-hmm. I think I got two more. What we got? Uh, the Weekend Starboy. <laughs> yeah, I know that you want to go like... Once again, an album that I probably haven't listened to so much to put it in there. Uh, that's fair. But uh, great album. Yeah. But once... The, the reason I didn't put it up there high is this, there's a few filler tracks. There's about four filler tracks in there for me that I found quite boring, but the rest of the album is going to put him right up there if not if he's not already there. I feel you. And uh, you're going to hate this last one. What's he going to do? What are you going to do? Kanye West, The Life of Pablo. No, see, I understand that. You understand it? I understand. Well, <laughs> it's got huge replayability. It's got massive replayability, but for, but me, I understand. But for me, it's tracks. I understand. Back to front, there were tracks that I'll probably skip. It's a mess, man. It's it's a beautiful mess. It's a beautiful mess. But you know what else is a beautiful mm. mess? Dark Fantasy. No, nah, I can listen to that front to back. That's what I mean. It's, it's an actual beautiful mess. It's a beautiful mess that works in so many ways. Well, this works in certain ways. Mm. Maybe it's, I shouldn't use and that, that example. Is, uh, <laughs> but that's my, uh, that's my honorable mention. That's honorable mentions for 2016. If uh, I miss some, we'll albums. make sure we're fucking recapping that shit. Yeah. yeah. That's it, Jungle Jungle Beats Radio. Yeah.